ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another edition of new planet cybertron reviews now today we are going to review we are going to take a look at a legend now god knows this is uh, to me it's one of the most anticipated review ever because i've been wanting to make this review to do this review for a long long time this is the G1 Six Shot, and uh, this is not the original from the 1986. However, this is from the 2002, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this was literally a reissue of the original G1 figure. Uh, no changes, exactly the same old, just reissued, and. Uh, as you can see this is D98 it's a banged up box but I love this box I mean look at it you can see each of this figure very nice look at that you see that and oh, it's a bit dusty to be honest it is dusty I've been keeping, I mean, I've kept this box in storage for a long time. I, I took this out only for this review. And I have not seen this box for a long, long time. Uh, look at that. Look at this. I mean, these are during a time that you get this type of stuff look at that i mean you can see like uh fortress maximus there scorpion the headmasters and uh awkwardly i don't see six shot in here are they i don't think i can see him anyway this is a beautiful artwork from the japanese uh g1 series very nice so we will go through each of these transformation later okay and uh, yeah I'm not gonna go through with a wing wolf mode I mean because I know to me Six shot. I mean, Wing Wolf was only it was only depicted in the uh, original Japanese series. Okay. And let me try to just see whether I can get all six shot in all this entirety. He is a very huge and tall figure. Yeah, I think this should be good enough. And I mean, before we go further on, let's do a size comparison. This is him with. The Titan Returns six shot. I'm not taking anything away from this figure right here. This figure itself is good, but I don't know some that, that's a magic with the original G1 six shot. And this is the Voyager class ratchet from the movie line. So anyway, let's put this aside. And uh, there's nothing much to say about this figure other than that, yes, it's a brick. This is basically the only articulation that he has, unless you count this as a articulation, but, which obviously not. Uh, take out the guns. The guns are identical. Uh, just take a look at one. Look at that. Beautiful. Simply beautiful. Okay. Uh, there's no articulation whatsoever. No neck. No nothing. Not even fist. At least except this but this is again this is for transformation 
no elbow, nothing. It's a brick. Okay. I mean, when you're dealing with 1980s stuff from 1980s, I mean, it just meant to look good. You know, articulation points down the drain. And uh, even having said that, this the only mover they has is blocked by the wings in front. So, how ironic is that? So, anyway, uh, without further ado, let's go and transform him into his car mode. Uh, now, for car mode, we need to like swing this thing down. I mean, back in the, the old G1 series, they challenge you that you don't take out the instruction manual. You know, you just transform him like on the go. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was a big deal back then. Now, uh, you want to like open this up. this inward close it up uh, feels really solid and then this okay this is where the, the, the even the box depiction had it wrong the hand is like this now the proper transformation is to flip it downward like this okay There you go. Then swing this forward. Put put the guns here and basically. Oh yeah, the wings hold it up like this. And voila. I mean, I like this. I mean, the joints are tight. The only joints is tight. And uh, my only problem is that, you know, it's bulky, the car. But this, there's nothing locking this point into the body. It's just like there. And it's like, I mean, even though that's the case that it doesn't lock in it's still like able to roll quite nicely and uh, yeah <coughs> it's probably the wings here no even even without if even with the wings upward it still can roll that's how good the joints the only joint on this figure is I mean, okay, let's pull it downward a bit just to get this figure into focus. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how much you saw it just now, but like I said, the thing rolls really nice. There's enough clearance down there to make it roll quite nicely. And uh, next, we're gonna go to the jet mode, which is also another one of my favorite. Uh, with the jet mode, what you need to do is you flip it forward, flip it, uh, no, upside down. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, basically, you have the cockpit ready. Then, you want to like swing. Like this. Now, actually, you have, uh, you can put it that way too, because the actual uh, depiction shows it like this. Okay, so you wanna like do for the other side. Swing this in. There you go, and then.
There you go. Six shot. Now, this gun, you mount it here at the tip of the wing. Now, there's no landing gears or anything. Let's see if I can adjust the camera again. This, it can roll quite nicely because there is, there's wheel on front here, and there's wheel at the back here. And it rolls very smoothly. It's amazing, to be honest. Okay. And uh, yeah, I really dig this mode. This is really nice. It's a huge, huge figure. I mean, this is my palm. See how huge that guy is? Okay, now we are going to move on to the gun mode. The gun mode, we're going to like flip this in. Take this out. Now, basically, the hands, we're going to just leave it like that, okay? And, yeah, it's, well, it's gun mode. So, you, like, need to swing this up. And, basically, with the gun mode, you need to put the feet back to its original uh, robot feet, like this. But this leg, you want to collapse it like this. Okay, now from the various depiction, it's supposed to go like this. Okay, this is the gum mode. Okay, and put it down like this. And there you have the trigger. I know with the uh, Titan Return side, it's supposed to be like, yay, a submarine. Bullshit. Part of my language. This is the gun mode. It's a huge gun. Now, intentionally, I mean, coincidentally, I have, you know, oh, well, you know what I mean. This is meant to be mounted. The guns are supposedly to be mounted in here. I mean, you can choose to do it this way. I mean, you, you, you see there's a hole here. Okay? And it can pack nicely here. Huh? Oh, yeah, before you do that. You can also, you should take out this. Yeah. yeah. So you can actually mount it here. From what I know, it's meant to be this way. That was the intended idea. Like this. But it's not depicted this way in the in the various depiction on the box. Okay. But just for the uh, novelty of it, I'm gonna show you it anyway. Just plug it to the side. Yep, to the side. Why do I think that the camera lose focus again? Yeah, this way. Including the trigger right here. Okay, now from here, we will go to the tank mode. Actually, the tank mode, you can just leave the... the, the, the uh, cannon there, but well, never mind. Take this out now with a cannon mode. 
you will want to swing this like this uh huh okay this is this is a trap so you gonna like There you go. So you have the threads facing the right direction, like this. And just to give you a side view, like this. Okay. Then you want to open up the legs. You want to swing the legs. Now you can close this up. Just let this open. Swing this. The legs, you can like straighten it upward a bit. You can actually lift this as well. So that it does like that. The wing, you will cover it this way. So, the guns you mount it to the side that's why i said actually from from gun mode just now you don't literally need to detach the side cannon there you go and you can close this up this is probably my least favorite of all this smoke because I know it is as if the designer just like jammed this in this mode in uh, I don't fancy it really I mean this mode I'm not quite fancy of it but yeah it's there it was depicted in the show uh, in the original G1 season 4 and uh, he appeared for what like one and a half minutes two minutes tops after he uh, after that six shot was not to be seen again in the entire US uh, G1 series until its next appearance in the uh, Master Force line was it Master Force or was it Headmaster Yeah, I think it was the Headmasters. We are going to transform him to his Puma mode. Now, Puma mode, you need to like detach all this. And uh, put this in. And you probably need to like there, open this up. Then you know, pull down the robot legs, the robot feet. Sorry. Yeah, it's kind of awkward, but you need to do that. Next, put the wings to the back. Align the feet like this. So, stand the legs, swing the uh, trying to. There you go. The Puma head. This is the only mode where it doesn't involve the blaster. So, basically, you don't use the blaster in this mode. However, you can choose to use that, maybe to attach it here. It's not meant to, but uh, the hole doesn't fit. I thought it fit. You can, you can put it here if you want to. Yeah. Now I'm just saying that you can. So, otherwise, you don't really do that. So, I mean, 
surprisingly I'm okay with this mode I mean the mouth opens like this surprisingly I'm more okay with this mode rather than the uh, the tank mode just now yeah, the tank mode is literally my least favorite anyway since we're here I might as well just show you the wing wolf mode because the wing wolf mode was shown in the uh, in the cartoon series you know it didn't appear much but it appeared for like a while so I think the, the, the wing wolf mode was used when uh, he killed Ultra Magnus I think so anyway you collapse the legs okay and then with the hands you want to like flip it like this so and flip it like this the wheel you can just you know, leave it up there like this uh, open it this way so it's like the wing wolf is actually a a mode where you have all the modes combined there you go this is your wing wolf mode it's silly really it is silly but yeah I know I, I, I told you guys earlier on that I'm not gonna show this mode but then again yeah I guess it's a bonus so anyway, let's transform him back to his uh, robot mode. Swing out the head. And there you have six shot in his magnificent robot mode. I mean, it is what it is. It is a break. I mean, like I said, you buy G1 figures for the looks. You don't buy it for anything else, especially not about articulation but when I was a kid this is one of those figures that I really wanted so bad but I just couldn't get it and to be honest during the 80s I have not been a, I have not managed to see him anywhere else on the shelf or anything I've seen Megatron I've seen Optimus and some of the car robots actually but never him never you know, when I was young, in the back in the 80s, I didn't have the dough to buy, like, you know, Transformers figures of my own, and they were, like, really expensive. So, I mean, fast forward one decade plus, two decades, almost nearly two decades later, that, you know, when, when I started to work and earn my own money, that I started to look for all this. And I was lucky enough to be able to find this I mean in 2006 or 2008 somewhere before 2010 I think they released uh, a variant of this guy with the box like all entirely in black and with a lot of chrome parts and everything I mean basically the same figure but with enhanced coloring you know the green was like more glossier um, I'm okay with that but I'm still more to us. I still love this guy more rather than that. I mean, yes, there's a bit of retooling here and there with that figure. I didn't get it because this was all that mattered. And uh, yeah, oh yeah, this is a rub sign here. Decepticon rub sign. 
real nice. And I just can't say, I mean, I'm just literally speechless with this guy. He is so nice. Uh, I mean, it's not an easy figure to come by. And if you can ever find it in a secondhand market, I mean, if you're a uh, six shot fan, this is a must have, ladies and gentlemen. A must have. So, anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this review. Yeah. And uh, if you have any comments, you can comment down below. And uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Okay. And uh, do subscribe to the channel. And uh, thanks for watching. Good night.